another upstart challenge, and the PGA has manned the ramparts. The Live Golf Invitational Series Funded by the Saudi Public Investment Fund and backed by notable golf, media, and business persons. Greg Norman is the CEO of Live and has not backed down against the PGA and Euro Tour partnership, refusing to knuckle under. Many in golf, the media, and elsewhere are slamming this new venture politically, socially, and on the human rights fronts. There is a strong anti-Saudi sentiment afoot. The Saudis have the determination, money, and what the West lacks, vision. They have remade themselves twice, going from tribal feudalism, to oil giants in the 40s 60s, and business giants in the 70s 2000s. They have remade themselves twice and are now embarking on technology achievements, Vision 2030. Golf is small potatoes. Several current players are getting involved, Dustin Johnson, Sergio Garcia, Graham McDowell, Phil Mickelson, and others. Johnson and Kevin Na have resigned from the PGA. Nicholas and Tiger were offered, but declined. But don't forget about the future McIlroys and Roms. Could Live Tour supplant the PGA Tour? On the Sky Sports podcast, Matt Southgate, Eurotour, said it won't happen today, but could tomorrow. The future of golf? The most overlooked thing with the Live Tour is that everybody is focusing on today and nobody is thinking of the players of tomorrow. The DP World Tour player said on the podcast. Five years ago, we didn't know Bob McIntyre, we didn't know Scotty Scheffler, we didn't know Victor Hovland. When you start going through the list of players who weren't on tour five years ago, it's quite significant. Should they stumble today because they can't get the players of today, there's nothing stopping them producing the players of tomorrow. That's where it's tough. If the Live had the money to put on a free tour qualifying school with a decent prize fund, then why would you not go and try? Southgate said on the podcast. X prize fund, as an 18, 19, 20 year old, then why wouldn't you go give it a crack? Everyone goes to PGA Euro Pro Tour School to go and play for 10 grand a week, so why on earth would you not go to the Live Tour School and earn much more? All they're doing is taking a punt that you're going to be the best players in 2026, 2027 or 2030. Rome wasn't built in a day and the House of Saud plays the long game. As the Live Tour stands today, various reports have said that 15 of the world's top 100 will play in the first event, June 9. Seven tournaments will follow, and Norman has told Sports Illustrated that he's planning to invite amateurs to play. The annual tour events will expand to 14 during the 2023-25 period. The PGA Tour should be concerned, Southgate said. On the podcast, he also painted a scenario that he described as a gateway to golfing hell. If Liv were to put on a tour school for the youngsters and start to produce their own players, which would be easy enough for them to do. As soon as you ban one current player going to play there, you can't possibly invite a future player coming back to play, he said on the podcast. Let's just say the next Bob McIntyre is 18 years old, and he's sat somewhere in Scotland today. He goes to the Live Tour school and wins, or gets an invite to play on the Live Tour, then in five years' time, he's world number one. You can't invite him back to play Scottish Open if you're banning everybody else on the PGA Tour from going off to play in the Live events. Western Short Term Thinking are you protecting now and incidentally opening up the gates to golfing hell in five years? If you say to Dustin Johnson, you can't go and play in this because we'll ban you, then you can't possibly invite someone from the Live Tour to play in your tournaments. Johnson has since resigned from the PGA Tour. If they then produce the best players in the world, you, the PGA, European Tour, instantly become second and third in the world. That's five to ten years of patiently waiting to produce your own players, and that's scary. Pro Golfer Matt Southgate, 